Good day and welcome to another installment of Bolt, the Bucket of Bolts. I bet you guys are sick of hearing that by now. Uh, but we're getting to the end of Bob. Bob is just about to be redesignated test motor number three. So we're all happy about that, especially Bob. Now Bob was purchased from a wrecking yard in uh, obviously a not running condition and it had already been partially stripped. There's a few things that wreckers will take off uh, motors simply because they know they can get a few bucks for it and often small parts, things they can shove on the shelf and they can sit there for years and they've got them. So Bob is missing a few things, the starter motor, um, the gear indicator switch, uh, the dipstick of all things. Um, there is just a few things that we need to take off another motor. Now what I've got over here on the bench is test motor number two. And test motor number two is currently a 185 and it was actually pulled down after I think about 5,000 kilometres of service to be inspected to see how the motor was faring um, very well I might add, not a lip in the bore no movement, um, I'm yet to look at the rings but I'm confident in those because if there was ring wear um, I would see movement in the piston uh, but the, the bike was really just coming into its own when it was pulled off for assessment. So we need to take a few things off test motor number two to get Bob complete and, and usable. And then we're going to pop Bob into the frame. And from there, of course, fire him up and then play a little further. Bob will become test motor number three. So I guess the easiest place to start, oops, is the starter motor, it's up the top, the fool who pulled test motor number two out, wasn't clever enough to drain the oil, uh, not mentioning any names. The starter motor is quite easy to take off, same if it's in a bike. There's only two bolts up on the top, and of course you've got your your positive terminal there, but obviously being out of the bike, that's already been disconnected. Uh, the back bolt hole there is actually the earth for the engine, so that also is loosened off. We try not to prise these things. A bit of a wiggle usually gets them moving. Right. Starter motor. Very kind of the wreckers to uh, leave the two bolts for the starter motors there. Often it's easier to get a part than the fasteners that actually secure it to the bike. So it was very kind of them. I actually remember walking out the, um, the wrecking yard with Bob under my um, arm <laughs> and his last words to me were good luck well we don't need that Obvious. There is an O-ring there to keep the engine sealed. Now that actually has to mate with the gear that we put on when we assembled the left-hand right uh, left-hand crankcase cover. And it also has to drop down to be square, or else it simply will not mate with that gear. 
if you find you're having a few problems getting that gear to mate, you can actually just rotate the engine. Because we were clever enough. plates off the side. Just wiggle till the bolt holes line up there and there. I'm actually looking forward to finishing Bob because the workshop is in a real state at the moment. We had too many projects going on. Some of which are going to be pretty exciting for you guys, but uh, due to commercial confidence, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. Now, people who can see the future know that the next thing I'm going to say is 12 Newton meters of torque. where our gear indicator switch goes. just sighting down the gear lever so that I know where to put it. Because Bob obviously doesn't have a gear lever either. Test motor number two by the way came from a bike in Lake Munmora. I don't know if those guys are going to watch this video or not. But they were really happy that it was going to a new home that was going to take care of it. Uh, the bike itself is tail-ended. Unfortunately, one of the things about our favourite little Hondas is that the wreckers will, uh, the insurance companies will write them off at the drop of a hat, pretty much. It's actually easier for them to write it off than to assess it. It's cheaper. Not that I'm accusing insurance companies of being orientated towards profit. Now, when you're putting the gear indicator on, we've got that little pin there that has to line up. Hopefully you can see that there. The pin has to line up with the notch on the selector drum. And you'll notice that the back of it, the, um, the wire is actually shaped so that the, um, the wiring loom here will go up. If you put it in upside down, then it will face the wrong way. Just pop that on there. up
bolts. Two out of the way. Gear stick on. Gear stick. Gear change lever. Now, I don't actually see any reason why we need to have these caps still loose. Um, I'm sure a reason will occur to me down the track. But for now we'll tighten them up like we're going to leave them tight. Now a word on these caps, they've got an O-ring seal. They don't need to be tight. They're not load bearing in any way. They're just really holding themselves on. But when they've been over tightened, they're a real pain in the behind. Especially when you need it off in a hurry. So you might notice that I'm just going to finger tight and I'm just nipping it. And that's all that we'll ever need. Okay. So goodbye Bob. Hello number three.